Welcome to Moto Trek. I'm Dusty Wessels, professional motorcycle instructor with West 38 Moto. So I made the switch. I went from my 1250 GS Adventure to the 1250 GS Standard. For about the last seven years, I've gone back and forth between owning these motorcycles. Here's what I like more about the Standard GS. The Standard GS is lighter and it's not as tall as the Adventure. The bullet points will tell you the weight of this bike is not much less than the Adventure, but when it gets technical, this is a lot lighter to manage. Most of the weight savings on the Standard GS is in the fuel tank. Without all that weight up high, when I get into more technical terrain, it feels much easier for me to manage. On the Standard, I can flat foot with knees bent. I have much more control. On the Adventure, I had to sit one foot on the peg all the time with my short inseam. The one thing I miss on the Adventure on long pavement stretches was the cockpit. A lot more comfortable, more flat, like I'm sitting on a big Cadillac. The first upgrades I install on a new motorcycle, headlight guard, upper and lower crash bars, and a skid plate. A headlight guard is not just for off-road riders. You can catch a rock in the headlight riding down the pavement. I install a headlight guard because I go on group rides a lot. I've caught a rock that went through the lens of the motorcycle I was riding at the time. I had to replace it. Now, I got lucky and I didn't have to replace the whole housing, but on a bike like this, and depending on the bike you're riding, this is really cheap insurance for not having to replace the whole housing. The upper crash bars not only protect these really expensive plastic pieces, but they protect vital pieces like the radiator and the fan, which can leave you stranded if those get broken. On a boxer motor, the lower crash bars are here to protect the cylinder head. On any bike, the lower crash bars protect the integrity of the motor. So I've also installed cylinder covers. These are here to protect what the crash bar misses. A factory mounted skid plate is good for the occasional rock ding. When you ride off road, you want a strong frame mounted skid plate that protects the bottom of the engine from major impacts. Some skid plates are engine mounted, which leaves the motor vulnerable to impacts that could crack the case. Hand guards of some sort, I think are a must. They protect some vital pieces up here. I stuck with the stock ones from BMW. I prefer plastic injection molded. I installed a kickstand switch protector. If your kickstand switch gets damaged, it'll disable your bike. So that's how I protect the bike. Here are some things I've added to customize it. So I'm about six feet tall and I've tried multiple heights of risers over the years. Currently I'm riding without risers. What I like about it is I'm into the bike. I'm closer. I feel like I can steer better. I can manage the weight and I can really put the front tire where I want it. I'm losing a little bit of comfort in some situations, but right now I like riding without risers. These foot pegs are wider and longer than the stock foot pegs. The stock foot pegs are pretty narrow and they dig into the arches of my feet. And over time, that's just really taxing. The other thing is I like a wider platform uh, to operate the controls from, but also the most important thing is when I ride off road and stand up, I'm steering with my feet. So really having a good spot for my boots and my feet to influence the motorcycle is important to me. This is the BMW brake lever that comes on the Adventure. I put it on my standard to give me a little more room when I'm standing up off-road reaching the brake pedal. So I've upgraded to Woody's wheels. These are stronger, lighter, and I can still use tubeless tires. I always replace my stock mirrors. I've tried a lot of different mirrors. What I like about these is they're easy to adjust. I can put one in an up position, leave one in the down position, so when I'm sitting or standing off-road, I can still see the group behind me. The other thing I like about these mirrors is while I'm riding, with one hand, I can move them to keep them out of harm's way. I installed this fixed charger. What I didn't like about the plug-in charger is it would bounce around and come loose when I was riding off-road. I've tried a lot of different phone mounts. I really like the quad lock. It's shock mounted. I don't need a cord to charge it. And the phone has never fallen off riding in the toughest conditions. So this is just a general battery tender that you can install on any motorcycle. It goes directly to the battery and provides constant power. I use it for my pump to pump up my tires. I also use it to plug in any of my devices for USB. My phone, my Cena charger, my inReach. I can charge anything from here with the bike off. So instead of installing the really expensive lever, I just cut the end of this off. What it does is when I really need to hold onto the bike but still operate the clutch lever, I can have my whole hand around the hand grip, do a one finger or a two finger pull without hitting my other fingers. So GPS navigation has come a long way. 
I currently still use a GPS. I also use a phone for navigation, but the reason why I specifically like the GPS is if I'm following a track and I wanna know how far it is to the next turn or I wanna know how far it is to pavement, I put in a waypoint, I tell a GPS to go, I now have distance and time to the waypoint that I've entered. So I'm back to the 1250GS standard. I'm sticking, I'm staying, I'm not going back to an adventure. The type of riding I do, the type of trips I take, this bike just fits me so much better.